understand why I'm coming to radio and, and y'all don't even have my songs ready. That's the main focus. Right, bro. That's the focus of the, the whole interview, bro. Have her song ready next time, Charlemagne. Because I'm blaming everything on you. Because you the head honcho, supposedly. So next time, have her stuff ready, bro. That was very disrespectful of y'all. Y'all don't support her music for real. Y'all just want the interview just to, for y'all benefit. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I don't care nothing about no rich, I'm trippin' gettin' sick I don't care about no nigga, cause these niggas just be flings I don't stun nobody, bitch, if you do that, that's amazing See, we drippin' like the fox, and I just put on my pretend Nigga, I was selling drugs, bad with niggas, they was What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, only one KDB, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, we got the most awkward interviews in hip hop history, the Breakfast Club edition. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell so you can notify and I drop another banger, bruh. We finna get to it, fam. You know what I'm saying? This is but this is a video by Hip Hop Madness. Shout out Hip Hop Madness, bruh. She, he be dropping bangers. I said she, my bad. He be dropping bangers back to back. Mean is versus. Nicest rappers. I might react to that too. But uh, we finna get to the video, bruh. Make sure y'all like the video because it helped me get in the algorithm. Make sure y'all subscribe and hit that notification bell. Let's get to it, bruh. I've been talking for long enough. Considering that The Breakfast Club has been on air for over 13 years, it's no surprise that the show has produced some incredibly awkward moments. What happened to Lil' so Mama? Let's get straight to I hear about number her 10, in a while. We have an artist who's been disrespected by most hip hop media outlets, and The Breakfast Club might have left the worst impression of them all. During his interview, Charlemagne appeared to have it out for Logic from the moment he stepped into the studio. After weathering remarks about his father being a crackhead to accusing Logic of being homophobic, things went. Yo! Bro, this is why, like, some rappers don't do interviews because of shit like this. Like, why would you. Why would you bring up his father being a crackhead? If his father was a crackhead, I'm not sure. I'm not for sure. I know Logic. I think he's from. I think he's from my city. I think he's from Baltimore, but. Bro, that, this why rappers don't do interviews, bro. Mad to worse when he took it upon himself to steer the discussion towards one of his family's darkest moments. And, in our opinion, the most awkward thing to ever occur on the show. Yeah. Who the hell your sisters? Oh, man, I don't want to get into that. It's yeah, a little too personal. Right? Years later, what and still fuck? left with lasting wounds from this tasteless moment, Logic later doubled down about the toll it took on him in a genius interview. Mm -mm. When he basically kind of called me homophobic without even watching an interview and i was like i didn't even say that and then for him to just out his mouth be like yo who your sister and i actually held on to that for like six years and i was like this isn't healthy and i'm talking to my therapist about it and i, I put i put it on record I where logic was at the mercy of the hosts our number nine entry made it clear that she was calling the shots from the outset while on a promotional tour for her second album, Nicki Minaj stopped by the show, and they were so eager to please her that they even bought her breakfast, which, to keep with the tone of the interview, she threw back in Charlemagne's face. Not even the right turkey bacon turkey. that I eat. No. I don't eat this one. I eat the real crispy one. I don't eat that brand. It's too hey, don't be ungrateful, Nicki. Now they bought you some breakfast, you know what I'm saying? They tried to show you some hospitality. You know what I'm saying? Go ahead and eat the bacon, bro. Even if you don't like it, just, just try to eat it, you know? They, they, they showing you some hospitality. Now, me personally, I wouldn't have ate that shit because I don't just be eating people cooking like that. Man, get that shit out my face. I don't know where you got that from or none of that shit. So, I ain't eating that shit. Got me fucked up. From there, things went from bad to worse, with Nikki calling out the hosts for not doing the research and familiarizing themselves with her new album before the interview. Did you smell on perfume yet, Angela? Yes, I did. Not, but you didn't buy it? Not yet. Okay, you a hater. Well, it's I love the great records on here, so let's go. Y'all need to start trying to break records and start and start listening to Ooh. people's music. Right, right start, start listening to the people's music. These songs up, though. I want to hear High School. I want to hear Hell Yeah. I want to hear I'm Legit. If you don't even know these songs, you guys do not cl clearly don't support me. I don't understand why I'm coming to radio and, and y'all don't even have my songs ready. That's the main focus. Right, bruh. That's the focus of the, the whole interview, bruh. Half our song ready next time, Charlemagne. Cause I'm blaming everything on you. Cause you the head honcho, supposedly. So next time, have her stuff ready, bro. That was very disrespectful of y'all. Y'all don't support her music for real. Y'all just want the interview just to, for y'all benefit. Tired of y'all interviews. When, when the kid come to the radio, Man. the kid comes to hear her songs on the radio. That's right. Right. Ever since Nikki has been talking about on the show, but while Charlemagne is often the aggravator. There was one particular incident where it was his usually mild man DJ Manning. DJ Envy that wanted uh, all the smoke. My bad. Here at number eight, we have the showdown between DJ Envy and Jesus and Mero, which saw DJ Envy, who had appeared on a talk show alongside his spouse to discuss his infidelity, take issue with Jesus and Mero's hot take. This man went on a TV show with five women to discuss how he was cheated on his wife. Like, what are you doing? 
I felt like a letdown. I felt like a failure. I was Rashawn at home, but in the streets, I was DJ Envy. Mm -hmm. So right. it was two mm -hmm. different people. Mm -hmm. I didn't know DJ Envy. You know them DJ, DJ Envy. Check so, though. You owe my wife an apology. We owe your wife an apology? What Absolutely. do we do? When you insinuated that she was there for the check. That's what you said exactly. I heard it. Since 15, before I had a dollar, she okay. was making more money than me. So okay. to insinuate that she was there for a check is a disrespect to me. Okay, can I okay I'm sorry. I thought we was cool. I thought, <laughs> I thought, was I thought we was cool. cool. I thought I that. Thought Even though the Bodega Boys seemed eager to make their apologies, it wasn't enough. As before long, Envy Oh, stole. DJ Envy, who you about to, he about to go out there, he about to go up there and slap one of y'all, bro. He want to fight. So y'all better get in y'all position, bro. Why y'all still sitting down? T DJ Envy coming to throw blows. Y'all bullshitting. The studio. Please put the camera on Envy's chair right now. <laughs> that is, the, that is light skin. You hear me? Oh, he <laughs> left. Among the most iconic moments in the show's history, Jesus and Meryl would later send Envy a gift, which deaded the beef. At number seven, we have Donnell Rawlings. As is often the case when Rawlings shows up, the line between what's real and what's done for comedic effect is usually blurry. Yet, despite this, there was one instance where Donnell clearly thought that the pair found humor in a situation that was anything but funny. And the way this book came about yeah. is because my dad passed away about a year ago and I had a box of, <laughs> what, what you laughing at? <laughs> Over the years, there's been plenty of moments where it seems Ooh. as though a fight could break out at any moment. The thing is, when you God, have someone as masterful at irritating people as Charlemagne, you get situations such as Friedrich Starr's since deleted appearance on The Breakfast Club, where he threatened to attack Charlemagne throughout the entire interview. But where Friedrich lost his temper, Beanie Siegel's approach to handling Charlemagne was this. way more terrifying and is the number six spot in our country. I remember this, bro. Be quiet, Charlemagne. <laughs> Who's up, man? <laughs> <laughs> man? You know, by any right mind, going to stand straight in front of me and square off. You're going to catch an L. I do this. Why you keep harping on that? We answered that. Don't talk out your neck. If you saying you want Yeah, that's that same Benny Siegel from State Politician. I mean, uh, State Property. I think that's what it's called. I said State Politician. Where the fuck I get that from? I keep doing that, man. You're a right no personality, man. You don't Perfect. come from my world. But you wouldn't understand my world. You don't know nothing about that. Stop about running your fucking mouth. It's dangerous. You're talking about somebody who went to war with police. Attempted murders in the height of my career. Ooh. Your job is to play games. Play, play with something safe. safe. Man. Don't play with me. Although Stop playing this with Big exactly Bang. The worst experience she'd have on the show. One occasion that saw Angela Yee weathering a storm of abuse came when singer and love and hip hop star K Michelle confronted her on air. Due to Angela engaging in a previous interview with Uncle Murder where he had some unsavory things to say about K Michelle's, you know what? K spent her appearance on the show absolutely dismantling Yee for what she saw as shady female conduct. You brought that back up. You had already addressed that. You sitting over there giggling and kikiing. I have to go back and see who brought it up. I you did say, why would up. you say that? Oh, you shit. brought it up. You sat there and chuckled. You did that. And you don't know what that might have done to me. You brought that up. Not him. Not him. And at the end of the day, I ain't with you for that. Damn. Let's move on. She hopped right in and continued on it. So if you don't want nobody to do it to you, don't do it to them. Right. No little petty about my and if it smell like a glade candle or a fish market or not, that She did not say that. That is fucking that's some wild shit to say, Angela Yee. I ain't bullshit. Tell her uh Kate Mitchell what's going on. I mean Kate Michelle. You know what I'm saying? Little is some petty from a woman. Petty. To Michelle, Angela's decision to feed into Uncle Murder's gossip was a poor show of sisterhood. But over the years, Angela has suggested that it was all orchestrated by Kay for a love and hip hop scene, rather than genuine animosity. That said, that's nothing in comparison to number four on our list. Okay. Back in 2011, Ray J and Fabulous got into a scuffle in Las Vegas. As news of the fight began to surface, Ray, who still seemed amped up from the altercation, phoned the Breakfast Club to explain what really happened. In the process, he gave birth to the hilarious term, booty goons. All I'm saying is if you got a fab number, tell that to send a picture of his face right now. Did you know that on average, there he are around 5 goons. million car accidents every year? Victims doing the other thing. You get a bad for doing his every The best. How many? Check out Morgan & Morgan. Their fee is free unless you win. For more information, pound 529. I swear to God, he running from me right now. I had a hundred fools outside a moon right now. He never left the club. Ooh. He was scared up in there. He tried to call the police. So when you hit him, what did he do, Ray? Nothing. He fell back because he's a sucker. That whole team. You, you can't smack him over the phone, Ray. But... on the phone, and they go that. 
Talk to him, Ray. Talk to him, Ray. Talk your ish. Credited for saving the Breakfast Club from being canceled due to poor ratings. This was a bittersweet moment for Ray J, as this damaged his public persona for over a decade. But if you thought that was bad, we have number three in the Gucci. bizarre moment where Gucci Mane alluded to Angela wanting to sleep with him, and oh, Angela shit. vehemently denying it. Well, he smashed Angela Yee. Okay, oh, okay. Oh, oh, of course not. <laughs> Why you said, of course not, bitch. I'm saying, come on, guys. She didn't try it. Okay. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, shit, Angela. You about to get exposed. Gucci said you didn't try it. You probably slid in his DMs not knowing, you know what I'm saying, on a drunk night. Y'all know how y'all get. You know what I'm saying? On a drunk night, you like, man, Gucci looking, you know what I'm saying? He looking straight for real, so you probably slid in his DM. You know what I'm saying? Ain't, ain't nothing wrong with that, bruh. Go ahead and shoot your shot, Angela. You know what I'm saying? He probably turned you down. That's probably that's why you trying to deny it right now. <laughs> She's on oh, bad. Okay. That is a lie. Oh, that is not lying. <laughs> no, we was cool. I was not on your. Stop you it. You used to be texting me what hotel you was at. <laughs> <laughs> According to Guwap, this incident led to him being banned from The Breakfast Club. And in a 2019 solo interview with Charlemagne, <clears throat> he didn't hold back. I rejected you. I don't want you. What you mad about? But don't ever try to act like you didn't do it. You did. She oh, did. shit. She disrespected her. herself. Although Charlemagne later told DJ Vlad that he apologized for allowing Gucci to insult her, Angela wasn't as happy to let bygones be bygones and clarified that away from the cameras, they were no longer friends. While Charlemagne often feels comfortable enough to offend guests with impunity, one man who proved that he wasn't to be messed with was Birdman. Among the most powerful figures in hip hop, Mungo made it evident that he wouldn't tolerate disrespect. Or as Birdman put it, disrespect. I won't start this all straight telling all three of y'all stop playing with my name. And when my name come up, respect it. I'll drill y'all. Stop playing with my name. I ain't gonna say, say it no more. more. Never one to back down, Charlemagne immediately brought the conversation back towards the beef once the mics were live. And after another fiery exchange, Birdman and his goons stormed out. He done cursed us out. Get it off your chest, Birdman. I wanted to see you. I wanted to talk to you on your man and your face. Absolutely. You understand me? I knew a few places. Why every time? time <laughs> Why every time Birdman talk, it sound like he about to cry? Y'all noticed that, bro? I thought that was gangster. I wanted to come look you in your face like a man and tell you how. If it was an issue, you, you'll feel me. I just come to let y'all know, stop putting some respect on my name. I'm, I'm the radio guy. Why pull up on the radio guy? Don't act up with the radio guy. I my... Are y'all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talking. That's right. That's right. Let's go, y'all. Among the they most got me legendary up moments here. to have ever taken place on the show, the fallout led Young Thug to call out Charlemagne in one of the most sinister ways. Charlemagne, man, torture you, boy. Beat <laughs> you gonna beat that? Considering the prison Damn. time looming over Thug's head, he might have meant it. However, what happens when you decide to relentlessly clown your guest for the entirety of the interview? Well, that's exactly what Charlemagne did for our number one spot. Five years removed from her breakout hit, Lip Gloss, Charlamagne used Lil Mama's appearance on the show as an opportunity to confront her about her failed music career, as well as her delusional decision to storm Alicia Keys and Jay-Z's performance. But you're an actual musician. You actually have, I guess, some kind of type of talent. Like, you did have yeah. a little buzz going at one Definitely point. Definitely have talent. But what have you done lately, though? This is a, a what have you done for me what now type you, of industry. I, and if your face was the Bible, it would be the Old Testament. You got to show damn. people by actions and deeds, not words and lip service. People know you for playing yourself, walking up on stage with Jay-Z and Alicia Keys. Charlamagne, That's they know seriously. From. That's the truth. Out. Chill out, Jurassic Park, Tyrannosaurus <laughs> Rex prehistoric yeah, face. As he continued to insist that her moment had passed Yo. and mocked her appearance, things eventually devolved to the point where Lil Mama was left in tears. I don't, I'm not here to say what I'm gonna do. Um, when I was 17 years old, I put out an album while my mother was dying of cancer. That right there alone is a struggle. That's hard. That's tough for anybody. But my music will speak for itself. My actions will speak for itself. My mother will be proud. My father will be proud. And nobody can stop me. Period. I think you got a real story to tell, and I think you should tell it. And stop focusing on the gimmicks, and stop letting people but I'm make not you out to be a gimmick. caricature. But you're the person that's promoting that. Oh, you're that. supposed to be a person that's from my community, a hip-hop community that's supposed to support the youth. Shortly after the incident, Damn. this beef, along with Charlamagne's beef with other guests on the show, would lean to one of the most historic moments in hip-hop media. What's good, my G? Can I get a drop? I need a drop, man. <laughs> Nigga punched him out. Come on. Come on, Let's get a drop. Oh, he gone. Go, Charlemagne. 
<laughs> he ran down the street. But yeah, <laughs> Ro took off. But yeah, but that's going to do it, bro. If y'all enjoyed that reaction video, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Turn on that post notification bell so you get notified. I drop my number. Banger, bro. I ain't know they packed Charlemagne out like that. My man's running down the street. Who seen that fight, bro? Have you seen that shit, bro? I know that shit was crazy. They packed my man's out. They, and they packed DJ Vlad out. Rick Ross and his goons. Y'all better stop playing with these rappers, bro. They don't play that shit. But yeah, we ready to get out of here. Make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. And I'm out of here.